Hey folks, it is Tuesday, but you're probably watching this on Thursday. Welcome back to the channel. So this week, Bill, my sales guy, has been on vacation. And because it's only Tuesday, it's been busy. Um, I rely very heavily on Bill to look after customers as far as sales go and stuff like that so that I can do, you know, a lot of other things. And occasionally I dip into doing sales myself. But he's gone and I'm doing it all. And today has been a whirlwind. Um, right at lunchtime, I had a good friend of the family come in. Uh, she's trading her van in for the 15 Kia Sorento. Uh, at the same time, a fellow that Dad was talking to on Saturday when he was working has come in with his daughter and committed to buy the 2010 Corolla. So, no lunch, and it's busy, the shop is busy, and things are just flying all over the place. Phones are ringing off the hook, um, which is a good thing. It's a good problem to have, and I'm certainly not complaining, but with that Corolla, one of the things I noticed when doing up the bill of sale was that the registration, although it showed that it had license plates on the vehicle, because in New Brunswick, all vehicles have plates regardless of whether they're uh, in a used car dealer's name or in somebody else's name. So, uh, it said it had plates on it, there are no plates on it. So I've got to run down to motor vehicle. So you know how much I love going into motor vehicle. Anyway, that's what I'm doing right now. I may try and sneak a bite, even if it's just a donut or something like that from Tim Hortons. But nevertheless, it's good to say that we are finally on a little bit of a busy streak. It's just unfortunate it took Bill leaving on vacation for two weeks for that to happen. But I've got Jen in the office and Dad out in the shop. He's been running back and forth trying to get a few things done uh, to help me out as well. In between all the service work that he's been looking after uh, with Tim out in the shop. Got Junior on hand. He's washing and cleaning. Uh, so we're going to make the most of this. And I will try and give you an update a little bit later um, as to how the rest of the week is going. Uh, or sorry, how the rest of the day is going. So to start off this next video, just wanted to make sure we get you some information on what's going on and how things are going uh, this week after the big car show. The weather is great. Um, I don't know if this vehicle tells me. It's 28 degrees uh, times it by 2. It's 36. Uh, add the 4, carry the 1. Uh, it's about 85 degrees. It's hot. So um, I don't know if that's what's bringing the people out of the, uh, out of the woodwork, but for such a slow beginning of the month, all of a sudden she's opened up. So I'm about ready to pull into Service New Brunswick to get this, uh, get these plates for this Corolla and I will uh, get back to you shortly. Does this look like the face of a happy camper? Seriously. I was into Service New Brunswick for an hour and 20 minutes. Anyways, anybody who knows me knows that I, I don't get wound up, I don't get pissed off, and I don't, you know, things like that generally don't take a lot to rile me up. But when somebody has the ability to do something for you and doesn't, I get a little bit upset because I'm in the customer service business, and if you're in the customer service business, you do what it takes to make your customers happy. But apparently, if you're a civil servant, it doesn't matter. When you work for the government, it doesn't matter. Anyways, again, I get it. They're understaffed. They don't have enough people. They need to take breaks. They need to have lunches. I get it. But instead of me waiting for an hour and 20 minutes, she could have looked after me in a transaction that literally took the lady that was looking after me about five minutes. Then she could have went on a break, especially after she knew how long I was waiting. So, very frustrated, and uh, I've got customers waiting for me at the shop. Um, I hope they didn't desert me, but uh, I'm sure they'll understand that you know, service and bones are runs under their own rules so anyways we are heading back to the shop I still haven't had an opportunity to grab any lunch yet but that's all right um, 
I'll just grab a tall glass of water once I get there, fill my stomach for at least a few more minutes. So, and I'm probably not supposed to be holding this camera while I'm driving. So guys and gals, the moment that we've all been waiting for is the day that the pinstriper comes and Paul is here and he's getting things set up and uh, we're getting ready to put the color on. So on my Instagram, I gave you guys choices on which colors you wanted to see, my Facebook as well, and everybody sent me some messages. Some of them posted them, some of them sent me private messages, and uh, it's going to be a surprise. So once Paul gets started here, you'll get to see which color we eventually chose and some of the other little accents that we're doing to the car. So Paul, how long have you been pinstriping? 35 years. 35 years. Yeah. And you've done some pretty significant uh, jobs in your past. Oh yeah. 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 A lot of pictures. Uh, I've got all the pictures and uh, people have photographed me. Yep. Now, pinstripers always have these fancy brushes with the long bristles, and somebody once upon a time told me that it was squirrel hair. Yeah, squirrel or uh, sometimes horse hair. Horse hair. Sometimes. Yep. Yeah. Mostly squirrel. Yeah. That color looks pretty good to you, Jason. Yeah. Does it? Yeah, I like it. Because I can, you know, I can lighten it up more if you'd like. Well, you're gonna you're gonna put a piece gonna to, do, on there. I'm just gonna do. Yeah. yeah. And we'll take a look at it. And, That's right. And I'm sure that. Uh, just as soon as that started mixing up, I could already tell that it was uh, yeah, it was right where we wanted it to be. I have to get the the cons consistency just right on the brush before I start here. No, I think what we'll do is we'll go gray. like a dark dark gray. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with what you've got yeah, here. Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna mix that up. Yeah, and yeah. we'll take a look at it. And yeah. maybe we can maybe we can accent a couple of the edges. Oh, that can be done. Yeah, but we'll take a look at it in the in the single color first. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now I'll probably just do an outline. Yeah. Because you were saying keep this bring as out the, the color. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Well, perfect. Good. So we'll check back with Paul when we're getting closer to being done, and we can show you some of the finished product. Well guys, the time has come to reveal to you the finished product. So before I do that, take a look at this. So as you can probably tell by now, it's not lime green and it's not orange. And I think that's pretty close right is that there. Pretty close? That is pretty close. We decided to go with a very close proximity. Of course that Compressor had to kick in. As close to plum crazy as we could get. So got a little bit of a design here. And one down on the keyhole. Got a little bit of a design coming down the center. Again, surrounding the keyhole. And the reason why I did this, and I probably wouldn't say this any other time, but we had a little bit of a blemish above the key when we were doing the bodywork. And when it painted, it kind of showed through. And now you can't see it. But this kind of masks it up a little bit. And as we come down here, in kind of the CUDA font style, I decided to get something that matched my license plate. So in the same font, we've got Doba, and I really like that little touch. And of course, we come over here to the pasture side, and a very similar design for the top and around the key. At the end of the day, I'm really impressed with this. I know it's very subtle and simple. Um, as much work that goes into the pinstriping that you see on a lot of these rat rods and, and, uh, and in older cars, I really appreciate that work. It's very intense, uh, very intricate, and I think that uh, you know on certain cars, it belongs there. On my car, I wanted to keep with something very simple. So 
I decided to go and split the two colors. I did go with the Plum Crazy, and I can't be any more happy with the way that this turned out. So finally, I guess it's the, the, the finishing touches on a decade-old paint job, something that I've been meaning to try and get around to for a long time, and Paul and I finally connected, and I'm very satisfied with his work. So he will be in again tomorrow to do some pinstriping on the 36 Dodge project. So we will make another video. So guys, this is going to conclude this video. If you like what you see, please give us a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button down below and the bell notification so you get notified every time I upload a video. Guys, I say it every time, but I really, really, really do appreciate when you guys uh, comment on these videos. And I know that you're watching because those view numbers just keep climbing. Uh, as it sits right now, we're sitting at 219 subscribers. Let's get that up to 250 real quick. Guys, share these videos with your friends. Let them know. I have stickers available. If you like a sticker, send me an email to my email address in the description below. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next upload.